Okay. If you want to set right. the timer. Ooh, yes. And then okay. I have an idea of how we can pick our topic. Okay. So I have three lists in front of me of questions. So you need to pick number one through three. Okay. Mm, two. Two. Oh, damn. All right. There's only four on this page. You get to pick one through four, and that's going to be our topic. Okay. Uh, three. Memory and autism. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you're that excited. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you, hey, we talked about getting a veto. If you're, like, not in the mood to talk about memory. No, no, I was just like, oh, wait, you just wrote that down. <laughs> I did. <laughs> this awful. was from our last show. Although I do admit there's one other one on this list that seems more exciting to talk about. <laughs> I do this. Okay. I get accused of this all the time. And it's true. Is that like, I have these like systems and rules for how I want to do things. I'm like, please, let's do my idea. Pick one through three. And then I want to break my own system. <laughs> and so people are like, so you want me to follow your rules, but then you break your rules? And I was like, Precisely. Yes. <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> okay. Um, poor examples of autism. Oh my God. This is actually expired, inspired by someone on one of my medium art essays. They wrote an idea, because I do, um, I interview late identified autistic people. Mm. I provide them with a list of questions and then they answer them. And so I recently sent my list of questions out to my, the people that follow me. And I said, Hey, do you think of any additional questions? Mm -hmm. And one person came up with this question about, um, fictional depictions of autism in like mm. books, movies, whatever. Is there, are there some that you think are unhelpful or mm -hmm. poor characterizations? And I was like, that is a good question. Yeah. I mean, probably there's, I feel like there's probably more unhelpful ones than I know, right? unhelpful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I think part of, part of what's unhelpful about the portrayal is, is not always that it's inaccurate, like wholly inaccurate, but that it's stereotyped. And like, they all follow this one stereotype. And the reality is, and that's part of what we're doing here to, to show, <laughs> there are so many different expressions of being autistic that, yeah. you know, not everybody, not everybody stems externally. Like you and I have talked about, like, I, there are things that I do. I make this weird noise inside my ears and that's like a stim. <laughs> and I've yeah. talked to other people who do that or like wiggling my toes quietly or just doing these things that are like real low key and subtle and not noticeable. And there are people who have much more um, noticeable or external stims. Yeah. That, that's just different. From yeah. People. Well, and what I think of a lot that frustrates me in characterizations is like the rude social behavior depicted. Mm -hmm. um, when I say rude, you know. Um, it's like exaggerated. Is, and, but it's also like, I'm sure that does happen for some people. So it's like, I don't want to take away from the spectrum, mm -hmm. but there's also a huge amount of us that are incredibly self-aware and hyper vigilant and, that we don't, you know, all this masking we're doing. So we are not that. And, right. or that, and I, I shouldn't say that, like those autistic people, I mean more like, so we're not hurting people's feelings so that we're mm -hmm. behaving socially appropriately. And so when I watch shows that have autistic characters who are just benignly unaware, rude in all their interactions, I have a very, like, sometimes I'm like, I can't watch the show. I cannot. No. Even though there's other parts, like um, Extraordinary Attorney Wu. Am I saying that right? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't about? know. Oh, it's a South Korean show on um, mm -hmm. Netflix. And it's it's really good in many ways, but also, like, 
the way she's depicted with the amount of external stimming as well mm. as she's just so unaware of her ways of being well, mm. sometimes she's aware but like she just d- acts anyways that it's mm. sometimes I'm like Ugh, I don't I just <laughs> I would I would love to have a character I could relate to more yes yes and I think you know, it, it's curious to me. I wonder. I wonder if there are differences in presentation of like someone who's identified as autistic as a child versus someone mm. who is an adult. Like, it's a good point. Like, there are things that yeah. I've learned that kind of fall outside of the standard behavior of autistics because I was not identified and there were just like social norms that I was expected to meet and yes. uh, and also various factors in my environment that like I needed to be exceptionally aware of people's facial expressions and their tone of voice and mm-hmm. all these things that like on yeah autism evaluations it's like you have a hard time reading people's faces I'm like nope I can read anybody's face (laughs) yeah oh that's such a good point because I think most of the fictional shows it's assumed they've always known they've been autistic Mm -hmm. or they're coded autistic meaning we it's actually not even said they're autistic right so I'm I can only think of one show that has a character who finds out they're autistic as an adult. And that show is um, everything's going to be okay. Hmm. I love that show for the record. Okay. But um, we're supposed to be talking about poor examples of autism. It's on Hulu, anyone. (laughs) But But also, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't totally interrupt. No, 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 no. I was just, my mind was, no, go. Um there is so I just was watching the show the librarians which is like so fantastically like nerdy and amazing like the librarians are the superheroes and it's so awesome they're like what is it on the librarians um Amazon I think Amazon Prime okay um but one of the characters has um like exceptional savant genius math Mm -hmm. and physics and is able to like like they show in visual effects but like this person can like see the equation Mm. or see the things and that you know there's there are people who I think the term is synesthete (laughs) have Uh, synesthete can't say that word but like where people smell colors or yeah 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 yeah. hear the hear um see colors when they hear a sound and so you know like in my autistic self way I'm like huh I wonder if she is autistic and if she is then she would be a good representation because she also exhibits like this profound depth of empathy and compassion and Mm. ability to connect with people deeply and also sometimes miss miss certain social signals and cues and so like my my little heart is like oh my gosh if this person if this character is autistic they're like incredibly nuanced in a way that I've never seen before if they're Mm. not well that was a missed opportunity (laughs) yeah which reminds me again, I'm going off script here. <laughs> in that, in terms, I know, in terms of things that I like. Um, oh, it's sorry, I'm gonna grab it. It's a book I've talked to. They're romance novels. Ooh, which I know I'm not normally into romance novels, but it was recommend. It's here we go. So, oh yeah, she, the author, is autistic and is a late identified autistic. Mm. And some of her character, she has there's three in this series, and some in one of the in one of the books, the the person does learn they're autistic. And anyways, this these books were so good for like capturing the lived internal thinking and feeling that happens, which is mm. obviously hard to capture in a movie 
when you're like looking at someone's external right actions and so yeah I think that's a really amazing point because so much of what has been harmful about how autism has been identified is that it like the behaviors or the actions are always framed in like what is uncomfortable for other people <laughs> like what oh, people yeah. around an autistic person is experiencing not actually based on what is the autistic person experiencing like internally and it kind of goes yeah. back to stuff that we've said before like when we were talking about meltdowns like externally we may appear <laughs> to be like fine and, yeah. and functioning well but internally there is just this whole other reality happening yeah yeah and I know you and I talked about this but like when I started talking to my friends and family about me being autistic some of them had a hard time understanding that but largely because I hadn't talked to them about my like interior experiences and like mm -hmm. what I was actually thinking and feeling as I went through the world they just saw me as like I'm here I'm smiling like I'm really good mm -hmm. at being socially fitting in <laughs> like mm -hmm. people would and I'm really good at being conversational like like oh Jackie ask another question and like mm -hmm. make sure you're making good eye contact and like yeah um, yeah people don't usually know yeah and I like I don't know that there's ever any way to possibly distinguish but I'm always curious like okay like what part was nurture what part is autism <laughs> what part is like <laughs> societal cultural norms like being raised as girls in the U.S. and you know like there's there are so many pieces that contribute to identity which I think is part mm -hmm. of why there is a vast array of expressions of autism because we all yeah. have different upbringings and different things that influence how we are raised and what the expectations are. So what you and I are asking for is more nuanced portrayals that yes. show that complexity and layers. Netflix, if you're listening, I'll consult with you. <laughs> Hollywood, yeah. Hulu. Uh -huh. We're here. Links, links down in the in the <laughs> section. Uh, we're available for consult. Call us for will, our fees. <laughs> it has always been my dream to be in the writer's room for a show. Ooh. Like you can make my dream come true, someone out there. <laughs> that would be so exciting, right? Right? I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're putting mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hollywood, Netflix, Amazon Prime. Hulu, anyone who wants to, we are available for paid consultation on lived yes, experience thank you. autism. Yes. Paid consultation. <laughs> <laughs> but I highlight that. Well, there is like a movement now to have autistic actors play autistic roles. I do like mm -hmm. that. And so you also need us to consult if you're going to portray an autistic person. Like, Jesus Christ, wouldn't you want to talk to an autistic person? Right, right. Um, and this is off topic, and I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> I know, suddenly we're, like, advertising ourselves. <laughs> but hey, like, autistics are historically undercapitalized humans. And what we have to offer is valuable, like the credential of having lived experience as an autistic person is a really valuable credential and the world needs to know that and need, you know, mm -hmm. so we're educating. And well, them. since we're also kind of selling ourselves here. Also, <laughs> like we, we are, we are therapists. We have the education and training of therapists and like that on top mm. of being autistic means we're thinking about things in a different way as well. So we're extra valuable. I just like <laughs> And our brains Although, are so amazing. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is what led to the whole like find your five, surface your strengths exercise that I did, putting it on the website because I don't think people always know. Whoa, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You have to explain what this is because other people are like, what the yeah. fuck is this? 
<laughs> or sorry, were you like, I was doing that, Jackie? <laughs> Give me a sec. <laughs> so I, I decided to put on my website um, this section that's five ways to put my amazing autistic ADHD brain to work for you. Because I want, I wanted to highlight their specific things about how my brain works that are assets that I bring to my coaching. And so let's see if I can remember them. <laughs> I identified <laughs> organization, um, innovation, yeah, macro systems and micro oh. details. That's four. And then I'm a, also a poet and writer. So creative. Oh, I creative remember writing. that. Yeah. Did you yeah. put lists on there by chance or no? No. no. I guess that was just... also okay. lists. <laughs> <laughs> but those Gathering. those are like five main categories that kind of surfaced as like things that I've taken for granted in life and other people have reflected back to me like, no, like not everyone's brain works this way. This is really amazing that your brain works this way and those reflections taught me oh these are assets like these are things that I bring to the table that not everybody does and so I want to highlight them and I also want to yes. highlight that I think they're connected to my autistic ADHD brain like that is a unique yeah. combination of things that like <laughs> I have the capacity for really innovative creative thought and can churn out spreadsheets like a motherfucker you know, yeah, like, and, and I want to highlight here, it's not that you're saying like, look at me, I'm better. Like, right. you're just like, we're all different. And, and so you're just saying, hey, this is what makes me different and useful in these capacities. And like, that's why you made your worksheet available to everyone. So like, we can all right. be doing this in our unique ways. And I wanted to highlight because I feel a little bad about what I said about, oh, and we're therapists, please take us. <laughs> But like, so I'm not trying to like say like, oh, and we're better because we're therapists, but we have a unique perspective. And so yeah. I know what you and I are trying to do is help other autistics, like claim who they are mm -hmm. and like what our strengths are. And like, like, that's okay. That is not egotistical. That is just not acknowledging the facts. Right. And when we know certain strengths, like one of the questions that I have on the find your five questionnaire inventory is about like if you have to build a piece of furniture how do you approach that do you read all the directions and then start do you hmm. like set out all of the pieces and tools and read the directions as you go do you check the directions and make it up as hmm. you go like those the different ways that somebody approaches putting together a piece of furniture like that mm -hmm. uh, highlights different strengths and when we know what our strengths are, like, oh, I can, I can look at these things and I don't need directions to know how it's going to fit together. Then I can communicate that if I'm building a piece of furniture with a friend or a partner, I can yeah. say like, hey, this is, this is how I operate. How do you operate? And then yeah. maybe it's like, oh, I don't even want to build the furniture, but I'm really good at doing that's this other thinking. thing. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, I'm the person who's like, who can do this for me? <laughs> like right. I hate shit like that. <laughs> but like, if you can talk about it, imagine like how many fewer fights would happen over the building of furniture, <laughs> right? <laughs> if people could communicate like how, how they best function in those scenarios. And that's just one example of like, when we know our strengths and know how to play to our strengths, then we can communicate that in our different environments and relationships right. in the workplace. And Yeah. And this is another thing we're trying to change the conversation on. There has, there is so much focus in, in autism about like, okay, what are your weaknesses? What are your challenges? Mm -hmm. And how do you work with those? Like, yes, that is important. And we and. all want to talk about like all the, yes. ants, like all the things we're yes. extra good at, or we're extra, like, there's so much more than just like that. <clears throat> yeah. The what's wrong with us. Yeah. Yeah. Or, so it's yeah. it's yeah we're trying to provide balance and like it's part of why I love the word expansive we're breaking out of breaking out of binaries that want to just contain us in this like either or like there's there are very few actual things that are either or in the world mm -hmm. like 
so many things operate on like this whole spectrum of existence and lots of shades and hues in between um yeah. and so what no i was I'm, oh. I'm just listening and i was thinking too at the same time about our original topic of poor examples of autism but it still ties it still ties mm -hmm. because we're saying like the portrayal is too narrow which is right. exactly what we're saying here we want more expansive right um, yeah yeah it's narrow and like flat so we want like yeah. <laughs> multi-dimensional <laughs> yeah yeah and like i feel like we can also there's there's room here for multiple layers i know i keep saying that but like i am still grateful they're trying like yeah. i'd rather you try and muck it up a little than like mm -hmm. not include us at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, it's good. I got to end with some gratefulness. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, okay. I know I have a tiny bit, but I do want to say, yeah. like, I do, I feel like as an autistic person, have this part of me that's always trying to make sure I'm properly understood and not hurting someone's feelings. And that is probably a topic for another day. Yeah. That, like, it I know I'm not alone effort. in that. Yeah. 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 yeah the effort. The extra effort to put into making sure that we are not experienced as rude or yeah. insensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why it's especially frustrating when the portrayals of autism are solely rude when I work so hard to not be. Yes. So, yeah, that's a really good point. Glad you made it. It's a good place so, to end. <laughs> yeah. Next time. See you later. <laughs>